For those of you who don't know me, my name is Fernie Rivera, and I'm one of the pastors here at First United Methodist Church, and I'm so glad that you are worshiping here with us in person and online. And I just want to, um, as we gather to worship and give thanks to our Heavenly Father on this Father's Day, I want to say a happy Father's Day to all of you. And Father figures out there, um, just happy Father's Day, and thank you for joining us today. We will hear a message today about living out our purpose and how when we live out our purpose, the kingdom of God can begin to unfold in front of us and we can be a part of that story. So it's going to be, I hope it challenges you. And I want to say this before I even get close to preaching it. What I will share today is not an exhaustive list. It's just a a nudge for us to live out our purpose. So I share this because I pray that as we worship today, you will... uh, ask God to nudge you, to speak to you throughout worship today, and I pray that we may draw close to God this morning. Let us pray. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. Today's reading is from the book of Exodus. Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. He led his flock beyond the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of a bush. He looked and the bush was blazing, yet it was not consumed. Then Moses said, I must turn aside and look at this great sight and see why the bush is not burned up. When the Lord saw that he had turned aside to see, God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses, and he said, here I am. Then he said, come no closer, remove the sandals from your feet, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. He said further, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face for he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I have observed the misery of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their cry on account of their taskmasters. Indeed, I know their sufferings, and I have come down to deliver them from the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land to a good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey, to the country of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. The cry of the Israelites has now come to me. I have also seen how the Egyptians oppress them. So come, I will send you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So what is your purpose? <clears throat> what is your purpose? The dictionary defines purpose as the reason for which something exists or was created. What is your purpose? Some people would argue that our purpose is to make as much wealth as possible because wealth equals joy. But let's be honest. Wealth never equals permanent joy. Wealth gives us a sense of uh, joy and freedom, but then that wears off every time. So what's our purpose? Others argue that our purpose is to uh, create goals, short-term and long-term goals, and live towards them. But I'll be honest with you, if all life is is reaching towards new goals, that doesn't sound very fulfilling. So what's our purpose? What if our purpose is to help make this world a little bit more like heaven every single day? What if our purpose is to help bring about the kingdom of God? See, I believe that our purpose is to allow our passions, 
right? The things we're passionate about, the things we love to do. I believe our, pur- our purpose is to allow our passions to intersect with the needs of this world. And I think when we do that, when our passions intersect with the need of the world, we have the ability to bring about change in ways we can't even begin to imagine. When our passions intersect with the needs of this world, we live out our purpose. And when we live out our purpose, we have the ability to bring about change in this world in a way that we can't even imagine. And I think that's why I love our scripture so much, because I think this story is the beginning of Moses living out his passion of Moses living out his purpose, of Moses allowing his passions to intersect with the needs of this world. And I think it all begins at this burning bush that we read about today. But if you don't know much about Moses, let me tell you a little bit of the backstory. So Moses was an Israelite, and he was raised by Pharaoh's daughter. One day, Moses was exploring And scripture tells us that he suddenly encountered an Israelite being beaten up by an Egyptian. This bothers Moses. And so he goes and defends this guy. He kills the Egyptian. He hides the body and then goes about his day like if nothing happened. Now, let me stop here for a second. What Moses did was wrong. He should not have killed this guy. But I think in this moment, we realize... Moses' passion. It's to help those who can't defend themselves. Moses has a passion to help those who cannot defend themselves. And we begin to see this, this, this uh, over and over again in Moses' story. Let, let me keep going in his story. So the day after he kills the Egyptian, it, Scripture tells us that he goes back to explore, and he encounters two Israelites fighting, two Israelite men fighting. And once again, can you guess what he does? He goes up and defends one of them. And scripture tells us that one of them says says to Moses, who made you a ruler and judge over us? Do you mean to kill me like you did the Egyptian? See, Moses has a passion for helping those who cannot defend themselves. He's done it twice now. But this time, when this response is said to him, he panics and he flees. He runs to Midian. Eventually, he arrives at a watering well, and there's a group of women, a bunch of sisters, who are trying to water their flock and gather water to take back home. But there were some shepherds there. Scripture says they were harassing the women. Remember, Moses has a passion for defending those who cannot defend themselves. So he steps in. The shepherds leave. The women are able to water their flock. They're able to gather water and go back home. If we keep reading on the story, we realize that these women go back to their home. They tell their their father, Jethro, about what had happened. Jethro invites Moses to live with them as a thank you. Eventually, Moses marries one of the daughters. And Jethro tasks Moses with taking care of the flock, which is where our scripture begins today. Moses is out tending to the sheep, and all of a sudden, a bush bursts into flames. Moses gets closer, and God begins to speak to him. And God says, "Uh, you're going to go to Pharaoh. You're going to get my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt and take them to a good and broad land flowing with milk and honey. You've probably heard that story before. Now look, I just threw a bunch of scripture at you. So let me break it all down. Over and over and over again, Moses shows us that he has a passion for defending those who cannot defend themselves. He has a passion for standing up for those who cannot defend themselves. And in our text we find out that there is a need in the world. 
the Israelites are suffering. Scripture tells us they're suffering at the hands of their taskmasters. Life is not the way it's supposed to be for the Israelites. Moses has a passion that intersects with the needs of this world. And when he allows that to happen, he begins to live out his purpose. Moses has a passion to help those who cannot defend themselves. The Israelites are defenseless against the Egyptians. When those two intersect, Moses begins to live out his purpose. Now, let me stop here for a second, because as I was wrestling through this text this week, I had a conversation with God. And I said, God, I, I get it. This is, that's awesome. Uh, Moses was able to use his passions to meet the needs of this world. That's great. But Moses is some special guy, right? I'm just Fernie. I'm just an ordinary guy. You pick special people like that, right? But here's what I've been learning this week. <clears throat> Moses was not a brilliant man with special education. Moses was not on his way to becoming a political leader in Egypt, advocating for change. Moses was not trusted by his people. Moses wasn't even a leader in Egypt. Moses gets to live out his purpose not because of something special he has done, but because he has a passion to care for those who cannot defend themselves. And at the same time, there is a need in the world. And when those two intersect, he begins to live out his purpose. God uses him. And friends, I want to tell you today, God is inviting us to use our passions, to let them intersect with the needs of this world so that we can be a part of bringing about the kingdom of God, so that we can be a part of making this world a little bit more like heaven every single day. God is inviting us to be a part of that story. Let me tell you, it doesn't have to be anything big. Do y'all remember the flood of 2016? I remember, this was months into it, going to house after house, day after day, more and more homes that needed to be gutted. And I remember visiting with homeowners and volunteers, and everybody kept saying the same thing. We're tired. We wish we could just go home. We wish the contractors would just get the work done. There was this sense, we all got to this point, where we were just all tired and didn't know if we were going to get through it all. Around that same time, I came to the office one day, and there was a box waiting for me. It was from Indiana. I had a friend at the time who was serving as a children's ministry director there. And she knew that we were going through a hard time. And when she found out that months after the flood had happened, we were still working on homes, she decided to make a difference. She asked her children's ministry one Sunday to make cards for us. And we got a full box full of cards like this. They were all different designs and different coloring and different pieces of paper. And this kid wrote, Dear Baton Rouge, it's going to be okay. People are going to help you. We are sending some supplies to help. We'll help you get through this. We'll keep you in our thoughts and prayers. I remember passing these out throughout uh, the, coming, the days after that. And I remember this sense of joy, the smiles on people's faces, knowing that there was somebody in Indiana who was praying for them knowing that even long after the news coverage left and even long after uh, help had left, there was still people who cared. And you see, here's the thing about these kids. They had no art education. 
This one actually has really good grammar, but a lot of them were not very good. Yet, each and every one of them brought hope, joy, courage, peace. These kids allowed their passion for drawing, for coloring, for writing, to intersect with the needs of Baton Rouge. They were living out their purpose and help the kingdom of God unfold here in Baton Rouge. Let me share another story with you. I have a friend who loves gardening. And he particularly loves growing fruits and vegetables grows so many, so much every year that he doesn't even know what to do with them, so he gives them away. This year he gave my wife some uh, cucumber plants and some tomato plants. I've been eating cucumbers every day for like two weeks now. But he has a passion for growing fruits and vegetables. Well, one day he went and visited a homeless shelter, and, and he learned that this homeless shelter tries to provide meals. And so he decided to help. He talked with them and he planted a garden. He tended to it. He harvested the garden, gave them all the fruits and vegetables. See, he has a passion for growing food. The need was that the shelter needed food. And when those two intersected, the kingdom of God unfolded before his very eyes. You see, when we allow our passions, the things we are passionate about, the things we love to do, when that intersects with the needs in this world, we begin to live out our purpose. And friends, here's the deal. Whether it's leading people out of Egypt, whether it's sending a note or planting a garden, all three of them were living out their purpose, and all three of them were a part of this story of the unfolding of the kingdom of God. And we are invited to do the same, to be a part of the same story. So how do we do it? How do we figure out what our purpose is? How do we figure out what our passion, how our passions can intersect with the, the needs of this world? How do we do that? was I've been reading through this scripture, I found three things that Moses did that could be helpful for us. But like I said earlier, this is not an exhaustive list. This is just a list. This is Moses' journey. If you read through scripture, every character has a different journey. But my hope in giving you this list is that it will help jumpstart your journey, our journey, that it will inspire us to seek out a way to live out our purpose. So here's what I found in our scripture. The first thing Moses does in order to live out his purpose is that he draws close to God. Verse 5 says, uh, uh, God says to Moses, Come no closer. Remove the sandals from your feet, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. See, Moses draws close to God, so close that God says, Come no closer. Friends, if we want to find our purpose, if we want to find out how our, our passions can intersect with the needs of this world, then we have to draw close to God. Our purpose has to come from a life that is close to God. Because here's the deal. A purpose that comes far away from God, a purpose that comes that's not Christ-centered, that purpose will fall apart. That purpose will never be good enough for us. But when we draw close to God, when we are intentionally close to God, friends, we can live out our purpose. The second thing Moses does is he listens for God's preferred future. God's preferred future, not his preferred future. Scripture tells us that after Moses draws closer to God, God gives Moses a vision of God's preferred future for the Israelites. It's, scripture says this, You are to bring the Israelites out of Egypt and lead them to a good and broad land flowing with milk and honey. 
See, God's preferred future for the Israelites is not for them to stay in Egypt. Their preferred, God's preferred future is for them to come out of Egypt and go into a land that's, that's good and broad and flowing with milk and honey. Moses draws close to God to find God's preferred future. And here's why this is so important. A lot of times when we try to live out our passions, when we try to live out our purpose, we do what we think is best for those whom we're trying to help. But the reality is that what we think is best isn't always the best option, the most helpful thing. Think about Moses' story. The first story I shared with you about Moses, he was defending an Israelite. But do you remember how he did it? By killing an Egyptian. Can you imagine the ramifications of that? the scrutiny they experienced after they found this Egyptian man dead, how much harsher the taskmasters were on the Israelites. Moses had a good idea, but it wasn't what God wanted for the Israelites. See, if we want to live out our purpose, friends, we have to not just draw closer to God, we have to uh, ask God for what God's preferred vision for the future is. Here's the third thing Moses does. He says, uh, Moses begins to take this journey one step at a time. The third thing Moses does to live out his purpose is he takes this one step at a time. Look, God gave Moses a big task. If you read the whole text again, it says Moses has to go back to Egypt, talk to Pharaoh, convince Pharaoh to let the Israelites leave, take them out of Egypt through the wilderness to this new land where they were going to take over that land and eventually worship in that place. That's a lot to ask for of one guy. And so I can imagine that maybe in that moment, Moses was a little overwhelmed. You want me to do what, God? But I love what God does in this moment. God gives Moses this big vision, and then he says, Come, I will send you to Pharaoh to bring my people out of Egypt. God says, This is everything we're going to do, but right now, just bring my people out of Egypt. See, when God gives us uh, God's preferred future, God will paint this huge, beautiful picture, and it's so easy to get overwhelmed. But God says, just, just do the first step. Just take it one step at a time. I remember when, when Baton Rouge, when everything flooded, I remember thinking, there's no way we're ever going to finish all those houses. But God says, start with one house. When we look at uh, the hunger in this world, there is so much hunger, it seems impossible to, to ever uh, overcome that. But God says, just feed one person. Take one step. Do one thing. Take that first step as we move towards God's preferred future. Friends, when we draw close to God, when we hear God's preferred future, It's so easy to get overwhelmed. But just like God tells Moses to begin with one step, God is inviting us to take one step. You see, if we want to live out our purpose, if we want our passions to intersect with the needs of this world, if we want to live out our purpose, we have to draw close to God. We have to listen for God's preferred future. And we have to live towards that future one step at a time. And just imagine with me for a second what this world would look like if every single one of us lived out our purpose. Imagine what this world would look like if every single one of us would draw closer to God, would listen for God's preferred future, would take one step. Can you imagine the transformation that this world would experience 
if we all lived out our purpose. The kingdom of God would unfold before us in ways we can't even begin to imagine. May it be so. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, I give you thanks. God, you are in this place and you are moving and you are speaking to us and you are nudging us. God, just like you appeared before Moses in that burning bush, you are before us, calling us closer, sharing your vision, inviting us to take one step at a time. God, I pray that we may live out our purpose. I pray that we may say yes to this. I pray that we may be a part of this story as your kingdom unfolds here on earth as it is in heaven. Amen.